y'all my name is paul borowski and i am the owner of quality business plan and i'm here to bring y'all our business plan writers tip number 66 which is assumptions the mother of all mistakes also the starting point for financial forecasting and what i mean by this is when you're going to do your financial projections keep in mind they're always going to be wrong you know and the reason this is is you know if you put it into the term something like this if you think about what you're going to have for lunch next Thursday, well, you know, you really don't know. I've been doing this business plan writing and, you know, being an author for the last eight years, and I still cannot project what I'm going to be making next Thursday accurately. So, you know, the chances of a startup company being able to project their financial forecast for a year and five years accurately is, it's, it's just not going to happen. However, when you're making your, your financial forecast, ins instead of just willy-nilly making up numbers, if you follow some kind of rhyme or reason or assumptions, then you have some kind of justification as to, you know, the validity, not the accuracy, but the validity of your financial statements. And so with that said, when I'm writing my business plans um, for my clients and even myself, I always put a financial projection um, section into the fi um, into the business plan, and the financial section is, if you notice, it's on page 35 for at least this business plan, and that's because I put my financial projections towards the end of all my business plans. You've got to tell the story first before you can go ahead and tell them results, and thus, while well, you have to explain your whole business in the totality before you tell them you know what what your financial needs are going to be and what your financial expectations are going to be so you set up the story you, you tell them the story first then you do your projections you introduce it and then you go to your assumptions and for the assumptions you're kind of telling them you know what are the parameters of this you know of the story of your financial um, projections um, for example for the assumptions for this um for this particular company it's going to be, I always start my financial projections with, you know, letting them know that these are just, you know, foreseeable expectations of management. You know, these are not hardcore numbers. We, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And then I go ahead and I detail exactly what the growth rate's going to be for, I'm going to use for the sales. Because if I can, you know, justify, you know, you know, a reasonable growth rate, and, you know, again, reasonable is also subjective. Uh, but, you know, what is an, a reasonable growth rate? And I like to do 3% to 5% every month for the first year. And then after that, you know, taper the um, sales growth down to, you know, a half a percent or less per month for the um, following 24 months. And then I just let them know, you know, the variable cost of goods, you know, approximately what those are going to be. Uh, a lot of industries, they have a standard set of, you know, what the expectations are for um, cost of goods. For example, the restaurant industry is very popular with, you know, if you're doing 30%, you're doing average for the cost of goods sold. Um, however, if you can push it down to closer to 25 to 28%, you're doing better. For bars, it's a lot better. You're looking at 20% to 18% cost of goods and so on and so forth. So make sure you outline what your cost of goods are. That way, if you're dealing with an eligible investor or an eligible bank or lender, they're able to see that your expectations are in line with their, you know, statistics show. Then tell them kind of how you're going to be doing your advertising. You know, what's your, what's your advertising budget? What are you starting off with? And what do you expect it to grow to? You know, for this example right here, $1,000 a month. And, you know, per year, they're going to kick it up 1%. Again, you know, this is fluctuating. This is a ballpark. Um, it, you're not married to this right here. If you're not getting the sales that you want, you're going to you know, kick up your advertising. If you're getting a little overwhelmed, then you're going to scale it back kind of a deal. Next, also touch on your um, tax rate. Um, you know, with the new tax cuts that have just come along, you know, my assumptions are going to be that, you know, tax rate is going to be about 20%. Um, if this, if taxes change, then again, of course, my assumption is going to change. Initial funding, I always touch on what the initial funding expectations are going to be. Again, this is an assumption. Ballpark, it might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less, but it's a starting point. And then start, and then finally end up with your, um, you know, your cash balance. How much money do you need for the working capital? One of the biggest problems that startups have is they don't set enough side for, um, enough, they don't set up, they don't set up 
enough money for working capital. Working capital is how you're going to fund your operations, how you're going to pay your employees when you start off, how you're going to pay your rent when you start off, how you're going to buy costs, your variable costs, your lettuce, your pickles, your tomatoes if you're a restaurant or you know your bicycle frames and bicycle tires if you're putting together bikes um, so on and so forth make sure you have sufficient working capital um, just to make sure you're going to have give yourself enough time to generate the, the brand you know recognition in your area to start building up loyal customers and so on and so forth so hopefully this information was helpful um, as to how you're going to start your financial um, projection section and if you all need some help writing your business plan, um, give me a call. If you need some you know, guidance on starting a business, I've got some um, real good books out, um, that I've published on Amazon. One is starting a business. It's like playing a video, video game. Um, so if you're starting a business, check that out. And if you need some help raising funds for your small business, you need some money to get operations going, I've got a book on that as well, Complete Small Business Guide to Raising Funds in 2019. And if you all need some help analyzing financial statements um, or financial ratios, I've got books on those as well. So check me out on Amazon. And like I said, if you all need some help writing a business plan, uh, here's my number. And don't be a stranger. Give me a shout. Thank you.